So let's talk about some workflow setups using the whole concept of splitting Chroma and Luma. All right, so I set up five actions that I think are really useful for you guys. Uh, let's talk about each one. MVP dodge and burn Chroma Luma with a split. MVP frequency separation, that's what FS means, okay? Chroma Luma using median as our blurring operator. I'm making assumptions that you know what dodge and burn is and that you know what frequency separation are. MVP frequency separation chroma luma surface blur, which is a different option to set up frequency separation. And then down below the last two, frequency separation and dodge and burn chroma luma using median and the same set of using surface blur. Let's go through them briefly and how I recommend using them and why they might be a benefit to you to kind of do everything all at once or in pieces, etc. Uh, and just to be clear, if you're not familiar with dodging and burning for skin correction, if you've never used frequency separation, this video is going to be confusing for you, I'm certain. But if you do know what those things are and maybe you find them tedious or you like using them, but you know, it's kind of procedural and you figuring out a way to do it a little bit simpler, maybe all at once and have some hue balancing tools. Let's talk about it. You ready? Here we go. So let's start with the obvious one, dodge and burn chroma luma. We run that, it'll remind you that you know, you should start from a new layer or excuse me, a stamp layer or the background layer. Usually something I do straight away. So now everything is set up. Let's go through it. First of all, we'll see that the chroma has been separated. There it is by itself. We do talk about this separation in other videos. You can see, but here's our chroma layer. OK, we can see that. And of course, here's our luma layer. Let's talk about the setup. What's happening here? OK, one by one. Our luma layer is at the very bottom. We have a copy of the luma layer clipped down. OK, that is similar to what we do in frequency separation, high frequency layer. It allows us to heal, but we have some recovery because we have a duplicated layer that's clipped down, allowing us to hit undo, allowing us to mask it out if we want or just completely get rid of it. It's just an extra safety. <laughs> so while you heal, you can you can you know change your mind or you can erase something if you need to, etc. Um, and that's why it's clipped down. That's for some basic healing. Is it the same kind of healing as frequency separation? No, but it's useful. And you never know when you might go, you know what? That dot needs to go. I'm going to heal it. That's what this is for. Above that, we have dodge and burn set up the usual way. Curves, which is you know, the usual way with curves anyway. Curve is brought up for dodge. Curve is brought down for burn, etc. Um, above that, we have a Luma contrast boost visualization layer. So brightness and contrast layer with contrast boosted to about 30. You can change that. Turn it on real quick if you want. It just kind of increases the contrast of everything so you can see your brights and darks a little bit easier when you're dodging and burning. And then the chroma layer is split on top. Why is this important? It's important for a couple of reasons. One, we can simply turn it off for now because a lot of times when I dodge and burn, in fact, the majority of the time, I will dodge and burn in black and white. But now this is done a little smarter than just a desaturation. It's actually done a proper Luma extraction. So this is true Luma, not a little bit inaccurate like the desaturation will do. So that's cool. But now I can dodge and burn directly and I'll get to color later. Why would I want to get to color later? Well, for one, it's separated in chroma. So we can get to it later. And two, we don't want a false positive right now, right? So chroma's on. One of the first things that comes to mind is right in here, right? In this area, okay, we have issues that could possibly be healed. Some high, you know, high frequency areas that could be healed pretty, pretty easily. We have issues that definitely can be dodged and burned. And we have some discoloring issues. These are all separate things. You have to look at them separately. And although you can do a certain amount here, you can do even more in the further actions below these. Well, let's talk about this real quick. Let's go through a quick real world example. Turn off the chroma. Let's do a little bit of healing. I'm going to use my regular old spot healing and I get rid of a couple of obvious uh, dots and some high frequency dots or whatever. OK, something like that. As you can see this light area right here in the middle. We can try to balance that. I'm going to try to get rid of these creases, see if I get lucky. Eh, getting lucky ish. That's not bad. We have to work in, you know, order of operations, the bottom layer and then work our way up because if we make changes on top and then do something underneath, we could be undoing our own work. We don't want that. OK, so a couple of heels. Cool. Let's go to dodge and put it like a 1% flow as is my usual. And I'm going to try to dodge a few areas. I'm going to probably speed up the video so we can see a better result uh, here in a minute. So let's go high speed. Go switch over to burn now as well. So let's say I consider that pretty okay. I'm gonna turn on my high contrast visualization layer and let me see a few areas that maybe I could tone down a little bit. 
When I do a contrast boost on dodging and burning, I sort of see it like, you know, adding extra weight to my workout to make it a little bit more difficult for me. But then again, I can see a little bit better and I usually get a really refined result if I work with the contrast boost on. So sometimes I do that. Let's take a look at what I've done though so far. Turn off dodge and burn. See all the different problems we had in there and now we've kind of smoothed them out. Now, traditionally when we're done, let me turn off our contrast layer. Traditionally when we're done with dodging and burning or we consider ourselves done, we have to now commit. We usually will turn off our desaturation layer and then continue on and flatten to a new layer and then keep working, right? Well, now we just turn on chroma. Now let's go ahead and turn off Luma so we can see the difference that to that. The chroma is there and we've helped it, but just because we changed the luminosities with dodging and burning, it doesn't mean the color's right. We still have that green tone in the middle. We still have other um, overtones and color artifacting that showed up, but here's what we do. We go to our clipped down layer above chroma, right? And we think when we work with chroma, we always work with a mid range. So we find a mid range tone, okay? Right now this setup is in color, okay? Color blending mode. If we have saturation problems, we can try to desaturate areas manually or we can change to hue mode. We're gonna work with that in a minute, okay? But let's go up to our layer. We have all sorts of discolored areas. If we look carefully, gray here, dark sort of a saturated orange here, green in the middle, all kinds of discoloration. Normally we can solve this other ways, but now, We'll take like a nice medium skin tone like there, and we just start painting. Okay, if it's too strong and too saturated, that's fine. We can experiment with a different blending mode. We're going to cut, cut, paint outward to the areas way far. Let me change this blending mode to hue. Okay, so we have Luma running. We can turn off Luma. Yeah, now let's leave it on color. In this case, we need Luma on. I could have flattened it and blah, blah, blah. I could have done a lot of things, but I'm going to leave it. Now, when we're working with the chroma layer, we see all the saturation problems. So what we want to do is we have made the hue a lot better, but we can take a tone like this and like a 10% flow we're going to keep painting and just balance all of that chroma. There we go. But now we can go and choose like black with like a 3% flow and we can use black to tone down the saturation, especially in shadows where there's a problem especially in shadows. Painting with black on a, in a layer like this to desaturate is not the most intuitive thing in the world. It's a little different, I know, but it's a very, very good thing to do. Okay, so now we have this. Let's take a look. We went from that to that. The overall, we went from this to this. If we zoom out. It's a little bit yellow still, and we can definitely work with that. Let's straighten our image again. Okay, we can change the hue around if we need to. If that was our only repair, we could change it right now. On that layer, we just hit Command U, and start changing the hue around, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like a negative two, maybe a negative three, take saturation down, negative four, yeah, okay. So I went from that to that, okay? And then overall, because we wanna blend it in, we wanted like a 75% opacity, maybe an 80, okay? Now look, we went from this, which had all kinds of color problems and everything, to this okay now we still have some you know shaving stubble in there and all that which you could have addressed but the whole point of this exercise is to keep all of our texture and we we did the dodging and burning and we did the the color shifting to make sure the color is more uniform but we're still flexible we can change anything i can turn off the chroma layer right now and go back to dodging and burning okay i can turn on the high contrast boost and take a look if i want and if i turn on the high contrast boost with the chroma layer it's no big deal we can keep working. We have that flexibility, which is really, really powerful. I know that was a kind of a real world example and I did a lot of detailed work, but a lot of times you open up a shot like this and you say, I like what's happening, but on the underarm here, this is, this is unfortunate. What can I do? Well, we can do that. And that really helps us out. Real world, that took me about seven or eight minutes. So no big deal, maybe a little less. So that's one use of sp splitting Chroma and Luma. It allows us to do a process that's normally two or three individual steps kind of all at once. And we work back and forth until we get exactly what we need. Now I'm gonna take all that beautiful work and I'm gonna delete it because now we're gonna move on to MVP frequency separation using Chroma and Luma splitting and median. So when you hit this, again, let's start from a flat layer. It's gonna ask you to set your low layer. If you're not familiar with frequency separation, I know you know what that is. It's gonna ask you to set your low frequency layer. Uh, I'm gonna go about 15, I guess, 14, hit okay. And the rest is done. Now let's walk into this one, okay? We have the low luma, we have the high luma, okay? And then we have the clip down healing layer. Pretty standard frequency separation stuff. We have transitions layer in between, which we can create multiple ones in between, just like any frequency separation if you want. And then again, we have the chroma on top. So if we only need to do frequency separation, this, this setup down here, 
this situation in the Under Armour is probably something we definitely need Dodge and Burn for. But let's say we just want to come in here and, and do some painting. Now, here's the thing. This is a different setup of frequency separation than you're probably used to. I recommend you turn off the chroma. I want you to think only in Luma. That's why this setup exists. If you want to paint with frequency separation to paint all kinds of different colors, this isn't the setup. This is usually for skin correction and other types of correction, but skin correction in my world. Okay. We're going to mess with Luma. Okay. So we're going to paint with Luma. We can heal as well. We can do all kinds of things. We can blur the low layer. That's what you want to do. But I tend to paint with in between, you know, the transitions layer. So let's say I want to smooth their face out a little bit. So I'm going to choose this and I'm going to paint like a 4% flow. Let's go ahead and speed up this video as well. I'm going to try to blend her face out a little bit using some frequency separation painting. Here we go. So let's talk about a little bit of what I've done here. Okay, let's turn this on and off, off, on. I painted chroma, excuse me, luma, away from chroma. So I'm just smoothing things out. I'm not worried about what the color is doing. I'm just trying to smooth out some of the uh, of creases and undulations and other things. Could I have done some healing to the, um, you know, the, the, the more small spots? Yeah, I could have, and I still can. That's the beautiful part about the frequency separation. Of course, I can come in and, you know, I'm going to do this rough. And of course, standard frequency separation things apply. So if you use a different radius, you might be able to erase certain things um, that you can't do with a smaller radius. So, you know, I use 12 or 14, I think it was. And if I were trying to do something different, I might use a smaller or a larger radius. All that still applies. On my, uh, I did it a minute ago, but on my transitions layer, I have a mask. So I can quickly mask out things that maybe I spill over that I don't want to paint on. Okay. Something like that, maybe. Okay. And if I look at that, I've done this and this. So, you know, let's clean up the hairline just a bit. Standard frequency separation stuff in my world. Okay. Now turn on chroma again. There it is. Now, when we turn on chroma, we see that if we turn this off and on, chroma is bringing out a lot of weaknesses in the color, right? So we can see there's a lot of hazy colors and whatnot. It's probably a little too much on the paint. So we're going to go ahead and turn that down to like a 75%. 75%, eh, 70, okay? But now the chroma is back on. We have all this gray areas that happens when you start lightening and brightening and doing other things, right? But we paint just like we did a second ago, like a 10% flow, pick a nice mid-range tone, maybe something like here. And then I can start painting over the area with a 10% flow and make all those grays and all those uneven tones become even, even areas I didn't touch, okay? So look at the gray in here. I can make that all come out. And again, just like we did a second ago, we get into the shadows and the saturation gets a little strong. Paint with black, usually a two or 3% flow. Paint with black and we can take that saturation down. So now we're suddenly balancing the skin tone. Go back to like a 10% and we're going to choose a color and paint with it. There we go. Let's look at what we've done. Off, on. Very difficult to tell, but we have balanced a lot of these grays that happen in our smoothing. So we turn it off and we turn it on. Look at the whole forest of the trees. Zoom in just a hair. There we go. Off, on. So it allows us to attack Luma, in this case with frequency separation, and then allows us to fix the chroma, which 95% of the time, that's what you need to do. You can get a little more specific with chroma, like, you know, you can choose a color. You can come in here, choose a nice warm orange, or, or excuse me, like a pink, and then make her cheeks a little bit more pink if you need to or want to, or if you want to rebuild some uh, makeup maybe that you you killed because you were doing <laughs> some painting or make the lips a little warmer you can choose random colors and you can still paint on chroma similar to painting on um frequency separation layers but you're just adding chroma on top instead of painting or solving all your problems with frequency separation color and brightness or chroma and luma you separate them and you attack them differently so while you're doing frequency separation whether you're healing painting blurring whatever in multiple layers in between or none, you're doing only Luma. You're paying attention to like a black and white image, but then you put the chroma of the original image back on top and you can clean it and you can smooth it out and you can, you know, fix areas that like shadows that get brightened, whether it's dodge and burn or frequency separation, shadows that get brightened, turn gray and turn green. You can fix that, but get your luminosity, your Luma under control, and then your chroma comes together very quickly. So you can see it's a whole workflow thing to work the entire image perfectly in one stack, one layer stack, right? but it gets better, okay? Some, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish and what your workflow is like. But the next one is, is surface blur. It's just a different blurring operator. The two that I recommend are median and surface blur, but it's the exact same setup. Okay, but now we have frequency separation, Dodge and burn, chroma, luma, median.
That's everything at once. So the first thing, of course, must be on the flattened version of the image. I'm going to choose again a 12, hit OK. And now we have a different layer stack, but it has everything at once. OK, so how do we prove this? How do we make sure we know it's working? Well, let's look at the bottom. We have frequency separation set up down here. This is our low frequency layer. We have transitions, which again, we can make multiple layers in between. And we have high, of course. And then, of course, we have the Luma high Luma masking, which is, excuse me, healing, which is clipped down so you can do your healing. But then we have dodge and burn right on top of it. We have the contrast booster right on top of that if you need it for visualization and then chroma on top of that with the clip down layer and mask as well. It's literally everything all at once. OK, so some best practices might be I've already shown you what I would do with dodge and burn on the sort of underarm. And I've already shown you what I might do with frequency separation on the face. I could have also flipped and flopped that, but now I can do it all at once. And what's great is let's go ahead and um, again, to be real world, I'm going to do some dodging and burning and healing on her face. OK. And we're going to do that high speed so we can get through it. And then we're going to continue showing what I do on the layer stack. So let's go to uh, let's go to the healing first and we'll get started and we'll go right from healing straight to dodge and burn and uh, get this face looking, you know, kind of that commercial grade. And then we'll go from there. Here we go. And before I keep going, you might want to consider if you are thinking to yourself, I want to smooth out some transitions with some painting in frequency separation. I would do that first before dodge and burn. So you're not undoing your work, right? So as I'm looking at the situation, I realized that I want to do some painting um, just to kind of smooth out some transitions and then I'll move on to dodge and burn. So let, let's do a little bit of, uh, you know, frequency separation painting and then we'll go from there. Now, here, here we go. After a little bit of real world painting, I realized, you know what? I'm going to turn off the chroma. Turning off the chroma lets me just see what the Luma is doing, which is really what my concern is. Color I can play with later. Let's continue. All right, that's not bad. I feel like there's some decent smoothing going on. I could probably mask some of that out, but let's go into some dodge and burn and really refine this edit. All right, now before we continue, I've done pretty good dodge and burns that I'm pretty happy with. Before we turn on the chroma, I want to remind you, when you're doing a workflow, regardless of how you set it up, a lot of times with experience, you'll learn when you know, okay, I can do just so much right now. I might have a situation that I want to adjust, but it's going to require continuing from this step by flattening to a new layer and then doing something else. It's it's a little bit like any craft, you know, um, woodworking, painting, there's a build up process, right? So this stack sets up the majority of things I like using. Um, and you can probably get through a perfect skin correction cleanup with this stack very, very easily, including color um, all at once. But always remember, this might be something more to do. Keep that in mind always. So let's turn on our chroma. OK, and like before, we have some issues, you know, there's some grays and whatnot. So let's come up here. Nice, super slow flow, of like a three percent. OK, painting on my layer clip down. I'm going to choose a nice even toned color there. And then I'm going to get rid of this gray here. Get rid of that gray there. This gray down here. What's interesting is that I don't have to do a whole lot of resampling. If I like the tone that I have, I can kind of paint almost anywhere, really. And if I spill over into eyes or the perimeter of the face or something, you know, I can always mask it out. That's why that mask layer exists. So I'm going to paint in some of that. And again, I'm doing one color because I'm trying to get it all uniform to start with. And if I need to you know, put more red in her cheek or under uh, repair some makeup that I painted over or avoid painting over it if I wanted to. There's all kinds of things I can do. So let's go to the mask, black 100%. Gonna mask out her eye, the edge of the face, the lips, because I didn't want all that in there, but I didn't want to stop painting at the edge. Hairline, clean that up a bit. There we go. Off, on, off, on. And if I really, really want, I can take again like a 2% flow with black and just tone down some of the shadow saturation, which happens mostly in the shadow saturation. When you add tone into the shadows, it will get a little oversaturated sometimes. You have to be mindful of that and just pay attention to it. Very important to do it now than later, because as you start adding a color grade, those red shadows could get worse, right? So you don't want that. But that's what this is for, for correcting, OK? So now, again, if I really, really wanted to, um, if I'm at 10%, let's go to like a 5%. I can flat out choose. A nice red tone like that. And I, if I really want to, and I can just kind of warm up the cheeks ever so slightly if I felt I needed to or wanted to. And again, go back to black and tone down saturation issues if I really need to, etc. So I went from that to that.
So let's look at our edit. Ready? Off, on, off, on. All in one layer stack. And the beauty is it's all still editable. I can change the color. I can change the dodge and burn. I can turn on my con visualization if I want to. I can go down to and do some more healing. I can do more painting in between. You have to be careful because you don't want to undo your work. Um, if you start painting heavily right now in the transitions layer, you could start showing your dodge and burns above it because you're still brightening and darkening up there, right? So if you look at the dodge layer, you'll see the work is still there. So you have to be mindful of that, but you can tweak what you've already done. So again, off, on, on one big stack. Then when you're done, you can flatten the whole thing or click on the top layer and stamp to a new layer and keep working, right? But that's the whole point of this. By It's not just setting up the usual workflow. It's separating Chroma and Luma so you can have ultimate control. You just have to change the way you think about things a little bit. For example, turn off Chroma. You know, if, if you're not used to ever using frequency separation in black and white, in this case, pure Luma, get used to it. Try it because controlling the Luma, which is really what I consider frequency separation for, Controlling the Luma is hugely powerful to skin correction. If you zoom in a little bit more, you see what we've done. Turn on the chroma and off, on, off, on. Okay. We can still tweak things. I had to admit there's some things I would change here, but for the most part, it's ready to go on one stack. Click the button and just work. I have gotten excited again after years of this. I've gotten excited again about dodge and burn, frequency separation, the quote high end techniques of skin correction. Um, because of these actions, because of this new layer stack creation, because I enjoy the Chroma Luma split. There are, there have been times in the past where I have been off on, where I have been frustrated by like, what am I doing? I feel like I'm working against myself. And that's because I'm not paying attention to Chroma and Luma split. And even if I did do workflow setups to, to pay attention to Luma first and then Chroma, they were separate. Do one, commit to it, and then do the next. And that's fine. It's workable. I've done it for years, but here, we don't have to commit. We can tweak and tweak and tweak. And then we got it just right, the entire body if we want. Boom, we flatten and keep going. And if we really, really want to, we can close the folder and start color grading on top of that. You can come in here and just be like, you know, I don't know, give me a, give me a selective color and then start color grading. And you can actually stay if you really are wanting to. There's a little bit of crazy color grading for you guys. If you really want to, you can have that color grade on top and still be able to change frequency separation, dodge and burn, and you know, essentially color correction with the chroma. Underneath it, you cannot commit to your edit until the very, very end if you want. And that's what's interesting about setting up a stack like this with the chroma luma split with all the you know tried and true tools. Are there other ways? Sure. But consider this stack, consider modifying this stack, considering what you can do by separating chroma and luma in terms of ultimate control. The, to me, this is now my favorite setup for doing skin work and retouching overall.